Hello there guys. Well a small miracle I've actually got on with this uh, rotary table pallet and uh, <laughs> it's, I sort of pushed myself to try and carry on with it because it's probably going to, it was probably going to be one of those things that dragged on. So I'm more or less finished about the only thing that I might add and I haven't got the time at the moment uh, I might mill one or two slots in it for a key stock something which uh, Lee, Mr. Pragmatic, Lee did to act as a sort of side uh, reference point, fence, what you call it what you like. So anyway, there we are. Um, I did refer at some point, I think in the last video, <laughs> everything is chaotic, I've got to do some sorting out and uh, over and above that at the end, I'll throw a picture in of the of the uh, milling machine on the side. Just one example of the huge number of or quantity of chips. Absolutely terrible. So I've got to clear all that up. So milling machine, lathe, got to get totally cleaned up. Um, so there we are. Mustn't waffle anymore. On with the video, not too long hopefully, just taking little uh, snippets here and there just to show the, uh, well, completion stage, but pretty long-winded. I think it was 42 holes, drill, tap and chamfer. Took a while. Anyway, glad I got it done. And uh, the next project, I don't know, because I've got to do some clearing up first. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you soon, hopefully. Thanks for watching. Yeah, bye for now. Well, there are the tea nuts. Not totally symmetrical. That holes, those holes are a bit off centre because I didn't make allowance for the uh, kerf on the saw blade. And uh, this was a piece of scrap which I was determined to use. <laughs> so, <laughs> so basically, um, functional. Didn't want to waste too much time making those. Well, here's the setup. Um, I've got four spaces in here. I've only got a quarter of an inch uh, free space under the pallet, so I'll have to be careful drilling through and tapping, etc. Um, the markings I made were very approximate, and <laughs> it turns out they were very approximate. So I'm actually going by DRO. So we're going to take. Uh, Use a centre drill just to get a marker. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then we'll do the 90 degree. And uh, these others are 22 and a half degree. No, 22. Yes, 22 and a half degree each segment. So I'm going to do across on the x axis the whole operation, then move round, do another lot. I haven't got a combined drill and tap like uh, Lee had, Mr. Pragmatic Lee. I thought of trying to get one, but uh, I wouldn't get it quickly enough and I don't need the expense, so this will just have to be done the long way. Anyway, I'll make a start, come back at some point. Oh, I centred up on the uh, 
You won't see it, I don't think. There's my centering slug. Got centered up on the coax. So that's my uh, true center point. When I'm hand tapping on here, I have done power tapping before on aluminum, but, uh, and I'm assuming this is probably 6061, but could also be something that uh, back in the old days when my father was alive in the aluminum business, they had NS3 half, uh, NS3 half hard, and I'm not sure how that compares with 6061, but this is very grabby material. So for simplicity's sake, I'm um, I'm using a spiral tap, but it's still pretty hard work. And uh, this machine hasn't really got the uh, guts to power tap safely. So I'm actually drilling a little oversized, so this will be about a... probably a bit less than a 75% thread. And uh, it'll, have to, it'll have to suffice. It's not too bad. Makes tapping a bit easier, but it's just very, very slow. So I was still working on this first row, so I won't actually video much of this, it'll just boil the pants off you. So I'll just keep going and we'll come back at some stage when there's a bit more progress. Uh, second row, <laughs> it's going to take a long time. I'm not going to bother with uh, centre drill or spotting drill, I've got a nice stub here which is a which is a split point, and that's adequate. That makes fairly short work of the uh, drilling. The whole of this is a mess at the moment because I've had uh, WD on there and I don't want to wipe off the markings just yet so it's going to stay looking messy. <laughs> It'll get worse. Uh, on we go. There's not much point in videoing all of this because it's incredibly repetitive. But we're making a bit of progress. Gradually. Oh, well that's the last holes. It doesn't matter about losing the markings now. So, we've got left six holes to tap and um, and chamfer and we're getting close towards finished on most of that. But oh boy, have I got some chips to clear up. Oh, you should see the floor. <laughs> well, I haven't shown much tapping either, but I think I said earlier, power tapping wasn't really very vi viable. Um, I can actually, excuse my arm, I can withdraw the tap and you probably won't see much here because I'm using my adapter which goes onto the chuck. That's why I've got a Jacobs in use and uh, I guess it's a bit of exercise for the arms isn't it? 
and also repeating myself I think the uh, this piece of plate was uh, from the UK and uh, it's a bit gnarly from a tapping point of view So that's the way the tapping has been done. I guess it takes a bit longer than uh, power tapping, but uh, the other thing is, of course, power tapping. There's only a quarter an inch from uh, the top of the rotary to the bottom of the pallet. So I wouldn't want to run the th tap through and uh, bottom out. I'm always paranoid about breaking taps. I expect most of us are. So this is about the last bit. Just put some chamfers on here. So, <laughs> that's a lot of holes. So uh, what we've got here is, uh, oh, I guess I might as well undo it, actually. Let me just uh, get these bolts undone. Get these, get these bolts out. I've lost a washer somewhere. There it is. I better vacuum that all up, didn't I? <laughs> This was what the uh, T-nuts had to be made for. So I got these countersunk hex heads. I'm not doing it up super tight at the moment because the uh, underneath has some burrs from the threading, tapping. And uh, I've got to get rid of that, make sure it's completely free of any burrs, but basically that's it. That's actually uh, pretty much done. And the other thing I've got to do is my, uh, you can't see it, it's out of frame, my hand wheel for the uh, rotary table. I can barely read the engraving on it now. <laughs> so there we are. I'll probably uh, wrap this up a little bit later. I did mean to add, I had um, some months ago, I think it was early this year, I can't remember, I made a set of four little uh, mini toe clamps and this is what they will be really needed for. One of the reasons I made them anyway. Um, the uh, threaded hole at the rear is for a jacking bolt so uh, in use we would have we would have one bolt into the threads on the turntable and then a jacking screw bolt at the back to uh, get the right angle so we'll probably try those out at some point yeah I forgot to mention also the centering block which is what I have to use to uh, get the rotary table centred 
and get this uh, centered on it. It's not very easy to get in and out. I really need to make a longer one but it's a very high tolerance piece so I haven't got around to doing it. In fact if I'm careful that's all it needs. So once everything's done up on here um, we can centre up and uh, be ready to go.